So welcome everybody. Um, I'm here right now from from Denmark. Uh, I'm working at Blue Ocean Robotics, and uh, in the last year I've been working a lot on uh, this software, the Behavior Tree dot C plus plus, uh, and I believe it's particularly valuable for the robotic community because it gives an alternative to what uh, um, we a lot of us do is using uh, state machines. Uh, Something that for me is really important is to understand why we should use this kind of tools. So I'm going to give away already uh, probably the most important part of the talk that is, uh, doesn't really matter at the end of the day if you use a state machine or a behavior tree, but don't do it your own. So there are a lot of nice libraries uh, in ROS. There is a Smash, uh, there is a FlexB uh, and behavior tree, uh, .c++, plus 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 but don't do your own. So the main purpose is to have a good uh, separation of concerns between what is uh, the functionality, uh, the functional part of your code that is, uh, should be service oriented, and then try to centralize your, uh, the behavior of the particular application, uh, possibly in a single component that is like an orchestrator of uh, the behavior of the task of the system. Why should we do that? Because most of the time in my career, I've seen people putting a little bit of uh, you know, intelligence business logic in multiple components. And you probably know that uh, it is great that Ross gave us the opportunity to have multi-process um, system and communication, but this is hard to debug because uh, I mean, with a, you know, GDB, you can just connect to a single process. Uh, so uh, knowing what's happening in the system could be very complicated. And at the behavioral level, it is even worse if we do that. Um, I care a lot about model-driven development uh, in robotics. So the, the concept is that you want to have a cl clear separation of concern. So, and, and having a, a single coordinator or orchestrator is the way to uh, keep all the other nodes clean from, uh, you know, uh, uh, having uh, application specific uh, pieces of code in it, or uh, if the battery is low, do that. Uh, you don't want it to have it in your navigation stack. You want it because it's very particular for your situation. But anyway, uh, enough talking. Uh, let's jump to the project. Uh, uh, so let me share uh, my screen. How do I do that? Share screen. Yep. And entire screen. Yes. Okay, here we go. So hopefully you all see my screen. So let's go a little bit deeper. Um okay. So this is more or less something I said already. Uh, you can read it in a Jupyter um, notebook. Uh, basically, what we want is to have uh, this coordinator component that uses possibly domain-specific language to express behavior. Uh, if you're not familiar with this term, uh, domain-specific languages, basically it's a language that is not necessary uh, to incomplete complete, uh, that, is, uh, that helps you to uh, expressing uh, some concepts, in this case, behaviors, in an easy way. So uh, it is uh, very straightforward to express a common design pattern in a domain, uh, but could be cumbersome if you want to do general purpose computing. But that is by design, because you do not want to do uh, uh, to implement algorithms into inside your coordinator. So having a language that uh, is a little bit annoying uh, if you try to, you know, to calculate stuff there, it is on purpose because you, you're not supposed to do that. Um, and also it is important, as I said, to use this kind of framework because it's an, uh, okay, it's an homogeneous way, uh, give you a consistent, maybe consistent would be a better name, uh, a consistent way to uh, communicate with the rest of the system. Um, and something that is uh, historically is true both in robotics and also in video games, uh, what you want is a usual scripting language, something that uh, you want to iterate fast. And if you think about it, the game industry was very active in, in this area, more than robotics, I think. 
uh, because uh, you know uh, the people uh, wanted to test uh, the let's say uh, the behavior of their software agents uh, in the video game without uh, you know recompiling uh, or restarting uh, the application it could take a lot of time in video games but this is true also in robotics uh, where we we don't want to uh, to stop our notes uh, and we want just to try different things so uh, this is the reason why most of the um, state machine framework we have in ROS are in python because you it is you know, it's an interpreted language so actually just to, to give some perspective let's take the example from uh, smash uh, remember not to double click uh, uh, here uh, there is a hierarchical finite state machine so the fact that the hierarchical already help us avoiding uh, repeating ourselves uh, and, uh, and making uh, a lot of spaghetti code but still this is uh, the main example that is uh, the peer tube plugging uh, in the outlet uh, uh, to recharge their batteries so this is the way uh, a state machine usually look like so you have transition you have states uh, um the way behavior tree so maybe you want to take uh, just one second to to look at this yourself uh, so you have a if the an action succeed or is aborted or preempted you have different transitions and then at the end uh, you have an output from this uh, let's say sub uh, this internal state machine that is a particular action um in behavior trees, uh, uh, we have, uh, I would say, a uh, more rich grammar that help us define uh, common uh, design patterns. Uh, what I mean by that? Basically, we can express in more easily uh, the kind of uh, patterns that we find very often, like, for example, a sequence. Uh, you usually, very often, you have a sequence of actions. Um, and when you look at the graphical representation, you will see that it's very different from uh, uh, state machines because uh, uh, the geometrical order in the representation has a meaning. And also the action uh, are always the leaves of the tree. So at the, at the end of the tree is where the action, uh, basically the interaction with the system happen. All the other trees are a way to uh, define which is the action to be executed but you will see it in practice in, in a minute uh, the advantage for me of behavior tree or finite state machine are uh, that they are easier to read so it's easier when you look at the graphical representation to understand what's going on because uh, you are obliged to to have a you know a graphical representation with a order um, they are easier to modify and extend because you don't have any explicit transitions. Uh, here in state machine, you have to explicitly tell what is the transition. So, if you remove a, a state from the state machine, then you have a lot of plumbing to do. Uh, not so much in uh, behavior trees. Uh, and also, I like that they are they are intrinsically hierarchical, so you can create sub trees that re you reuse. So think, for example, like a function. What is the purpose of a function in C++, Python, in any general purpose language? You want to reuse a certain uh, piece of code, a certain routine. Actually, you can do the same with behavior trees. You can have a tree that will reuse the as a node of another tree. Um, and it is extensible. So it, it represents, at least for me, it represents a domain-specific language that is easy to extend. So do you want to have a different uh, a larger grammar you can do that uh, don't just use the, the the notes that i given in the you know in the library create your own so let's start with a very simple uh, the most basic example that is uh, the control node uh, called sequence this calls control because uh, uh, it doesn't do really anything it decides uh, what to do next so whenever you uh, the way behavior tree works, uh, they are ticked, so they, they receive a signal at the root of the tree, and this signal is propagated according to the rule until it reach a leaf, a leaf of the tree, and the leaf of the tree is where the action 
uh, is is done. So, so here on this on the left side uh, you can see uh, the equivalent state machine. So you we start uh, detecting the object. Uh, we open the group. This is a, a, a peak uh, peak object. Uh, so this is an example from manipulation. Uh, let's say that we detect an object, we open the gripper, we approach uh, with our manipulator the object, and we close the gripper. So we have done the, the grasping. And if any of these action fails, then the entire sequence failed. And this is exactly the kind of pattern that is very frequent and it is easily represented here. So the rule of sequence, you can read them here in the bullet uh, list, uh, if all the children return success, the sequence will return success. If any of the, uh, the children return failure, the sequence is stopped and returns failure. So this rule is embedded in this node in sequence. And basically that's the way. If any, I start doing this sequence and I move from left to right. So that order is important in the representation. I cannot you know, reorder this the way I want. And if open gripper fails because, I don't know, the gripper is broken, then the entire sequence fails. And this is possible because, uh, as I said, I skipped this uh, in the beginning, the, the constraint of any no, uh, action is that it can only return success, failure, or running. Running is particularly important to create uh, a synchronous action and behaviors and also reactive behaviors but with a limited amount of time we have uh, I'm not going to go very deep into that so for the time being I'm focusing on let's say a synchronous behavior that can be uh, executed atomically and return success and failure just just to go faster because we don't have much time and then we can express actually we're going to express this same uh, representation of behavior tree in XML XML uh, is a little bit, uh, you know, there is a lot of uh, <laughs> boilerplate. Uh, it's not the most beautiful uh, representation, but it's, it's also tree. So it fits very well uh, in terms of model uh, into what we want. So it was, let's say, the obvious solution for us. Maybe one day we will find something uh, nicer, but let's use XML. Then another one of the main building blocks uh, of uh, behavior tree is the fallback. There is also called the uh, selector in other frameworks. So actually, no one really agree about what is a good name for this. But the idea is that you should try different strategies. And uh, as soon as you find uh, uh, some strategy that works, uh, uh, you stick with that. So that, that is the main idea, that you try different things. So the idea is uh, you execute the first one. If it, if it fails, uh, you go to the second one. If the second one fails, you try the third one. And so basically it is uh, something that uh, uh, as soon as uh, uh, we get a success, we have done. We don't continue with the sequence. Uh, so the, it is exactly the opposite of, of the previous control node. So let's take a look to this. Is door open? If yes, you're done. Don't, don't go on. You just return to the parent of your tree. If it falls, then you move to the next one, open door. If you failed to open the door, then you move to the next one, unlock the door. And if, if even that failed, then the entire fallback uh, uh, routine failed so i hope this is this is clear uh, and i believe this building block is really important because <laughs> sometimes i realize that uh, we, f uh, we we forget to to mention in our state machine what happens if the action fails so we kind of uh, focus on on the sequence but uh, bb trees remind to you constantly what happened if an action fails. So it's kind of embedded in the language. So I believe it's a good reminder of, uh, you know, reasoning about uh, what happened if this action fails, what should I do? And you have this building block, the fallback uh, control node that you can use to, to express this. And as you can see, once again, using XML, 
you can easily uh, represent this hierarchy and the order uh, of the action. And then in given trees, we also have another family of primitives that are called decorators that are really useful. And when I think about state machine, uh, ju just because uh, we have decorators in uh, uh in bigger trees that would be already a selling point so with just this argument uh, i would say yeah just because we have decorators uh drop state machine and use bigger trees basically there are nodes with a single child here we have two example that modify uh either modify the result of the child or uh, it determine if the child is called or not so maybe you want to execute, you have a decorator that want to ex execute uh, the child only if a certain condition is met. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, let's take a look. For example, we may have one that is retry until successful. So you keep on ticking, uh, this is the verb you use, ticking uh, the, the child uh, if it fails uh, up to n times. Uh, so say, okay, try, uh, here we have an example. We try to open the door up to four times, and then we give up if we really cannot open the door. The inverter, the base, basically, it does the opposite, it returns the opposite of what the child returned. So basically, if you look at the inverter plus is door open, it's like uh, is door closed. So together, they become is door closed condition. Um, also, you can force the failure or success, so it doesn't matter what the child returns, you always return a certain value. And there are more. There are also timeouts, uh, so you, you may kill uh, an asynchronous uh, child. Uh, for example, you can uh, have a child that, uh, say, try this for 10 seconds or recharge your battery for uh, one hour. Uh, so you can, you can uh, basically uh, create a timeout in a very easy way. And the nice thing is that you can add and remove hola, this hola, uh, hola, hola, hola. and uh, very easily without modifying the rest of the tree. And here this presentation. So inverter is a child or try until successful as a child. And here you can see something new in the syntax. Uh, you, you probably have noticed that also um, uh, notes uh, can have uh, arguments. And actually, developing this library, we realized that uh, adding arguments uh, like a function is not enough. It is mandatory because uh, think about the move to. You don't have, you don't want to write a note that is a move to kitchen, a move to living room, a move to bedroom for your uh, uh, service robot. You want to have a move to and then pass, uh, you know, maybe an ID or the coordinates. And uh, so, of course, to make this usable, we need arguments, but then it's much more than that. What we realize is that uh, what we need is also data ports. So the, a way, a very structured way to pass information uh, as output from uh, one node to the other. So if we come back to the initial uh, example, actually we can, we can refactor the initial example we had in this way. So we may say that detect object, of course, the post condition or the output of the tell object is a pose, and this becomes the input of approach object. So before, uh, this shared information was implicit in our code. We should uh, somehow have a shared variable or something like that, or a pointer to the same variable. But now we have an explicit way to say, I want the detect object to write inside this, uh, uh, this location, and uh, I want approach object to read from object pose. Uh, so we, we have data flow. Um, and then also, instead of having two action called open gripper and close gripper, we can have a simple one, one that with an, with an argument. So open true or open false. And so you see that the representation in XML is quite uh, uh, straightforward. And you probably have noticed that uh, this, this, uh, this way to represent it, when you represent it in this way, basically you are giving a, 
um, you're, uh, you're giving a, a string that could be parsed. You we will see later an example of how to parse the string. Or you are giving an, uh, an address uh, to a key value storage that is used uh, inside the Beaver tree. So, so basically, it's like a pass by value or, or a pass a pointers. So this is the object poser is more or less like an, a pointer to the location where the information is stored. Um, so it's not static. And once again, you probably have noticed that having an, an XML means that uh, we can we have a like a scripting language. So this means that, uh, and we will see in more detail in the next, uh, oh, why do you complain? The page. So now we will go deeper and you will see what is the advantage of using uh, an XML representation. As I said, most of the other libraries use uh, uh, Python. That is, that is cool. Uh, but I wanted to build something that uh, uses C++ because uh, most of our code is in C++. So you, you, uh, that was for me and I believe for many people an advantage. But I still want the flexibility uh, when you test and develop behaviors of a scripting language. So in behavior3.c++, it's a ROS uh, package. Um, you will notice that you, be, you build your building blocks uh, that are the action and conditions uh, in C++, but then once you have these nodes, the way you build the tree out of the nodes is in the XML. So this means that you build once your, uh, think about Lego uh, parts, your Lego parts, and then the way you put them together to make a construction uh, is is scripted so and a lot of people said okay but at the end of the day what is really a node what is an action and the answer is very simple it's just a, a callback just a callback so this is uh, so simple that people uh, sometimes get don't know how to move forward so let's take a look to this one check battery this is a dummy of course it's not checking any battery uh, if you look at this code uh, um the check battery so the only constraints that we have is that uh, it must be uh, a function or a method that uh, in a class that return a node state status the success failure or running and uh, doesn't have any argument uh, the argument uh, you will see how we acquire inputs and outputs but not as an argument of the, of the function and here in this case this is the dummy always return success and maybe you could print some information but you can put here any code you want and let's see something more interesting but the other way to do it is basically uh, through you c plus plus inheritance you so you inherit from this for example this is a synchronous action node synchronous means uh, atomic so you cannot stop it and this is say something so we'll just print something on the console um, there are a lot of tutorials but basically uh, what i want you to know is that you have to re-implement this virtual function you may know this the the name override that means uh, uh, that we are overriding a virtual uh, me method and here we get we read the port called the message we get input we convert it to a string. Actually, it was already a string. And then we just uh, print it on the console. Uh, Rob says whatever. And we return success always. So we cannot really fail here. Uh, and we tell to the system using this particular method, static method. Actually, this is the way we tell the system, hey, my, this family of node, this class, not this instance, this class, it has always um, a port called uh, an input port called message. So when we create the tree, uh, the library will double check that uh, you are connecting together ports with the same type. Uh, uh, so it will uh, do at the beginning uh, some checks, uh, type safety checks that you usually don't have in Python. So that that is good. So that you don't connect uh, 
let's say a, a quaternion to I don't know a point cloud. Uh, doesn't make any sense. So we have this check at the beginning because our ports have a type. Uh, so let's let's see what we can do with these two building blocks. Because we we may have this very simple uh, behavior. Let's take a look at it together. So what are we? What do we want to do? We want to say battery empty or battery okay if the check battery according to return value of check battery. So we start a sequence, then we go down uh, here. Say okay, check battery. If it's false, then because of the fallback, we jump to the second one to say something that is battery empty. And then since this return the um, return it true, we go back here and actually just realize that uh, this is super embarrassing that uh, this is the wrong uh, example because then uh, you will write this twice. I'm going, I'm promising you that I'm going to fix this. Uh, because actually what I wanted is that uh, when you do uh, check battery is true, then you jump to battery okay, but in this case you always return. Uh, actually, the way to fix this, uh, I don't know if I can do it live, um okay let's finally oh uh, i use for this so yeah okay i just realized that i have to uh force failure uh so i said okay it doesn't matter uh, what say something return you need to this need to be a, a failure um Okay, uh, I cannot edit the, the representation, but this is uh, what you want. So you want the entire fallback uh, to, to return a f failure, so you don't move to say something. So the entire uh, subtree fails. But anyway, the point is, um, behavior3.c++ give you a, a library to create uh, um, executors so basically the executor is this orchestrator node that uh, create a behavior tree and execute so that's why it's an executor execute the behavior tree and this is the way we build it so we have a, a factory a way to register uh, if you're familiar with design pattern you know what i'm talking about but basically it's a class that uh, uh, will instantiate your node for you so you have to register a node. Say, so, okay, I'm registering uh, this node. Uh, say something uh, with the name, with the, the same name. Uh, I'm registering uh, a simple condition uh, check battery. So basically, the difference between action and conditions is that conditions cannot be asynchronous and uh, they, they do not modify the behavior of your system. So check battery doesn't does anything but just read something and then we we read the, this xml uh, with the this command so it's a one line command and then we just execute the tree just once um, we'll see a more complex um, example later okay um, so at this point a lot of people ask me once again I are you uh, still, maybe I should save. Yes, that's why I complain. Uh, a lot of people ask me, uh, okay, David, but uh, I, I, there's something I don't get. Uh, how do I use it with ROS? Because your example, I have a dozen uh, examples. Your example seems uh, very interesting, but I miss uh, the relationship with, with ROS. So I'm prepared for this uh, presentation a very simple uh, move to using the, the navigation stack of ROS. So you will see how the code, your code looks like with ROS. It's not happy with this. Uh, so yeah, let's keep it this way. Can I make it bigger? Yes. So I've created a sample uh, to say, okay, let's, let's take a look at how an action in ROS would look like. So we have the move base. I'll, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with this. This is basically an action lib. So if I can tell you already, use action lib. Action lib is the way you probably want uh, to communicate uh, between uh, your uh, coordinator or behavior tree executor and the rest of the system because it's uh, 
you need something that is a request reply, you need something that is potentially asynchronous, and that is exactly what Action Lib does. So if you can choose, but sometimes I also had the nodes in the past that modify with the dynamic reconfigure, they modify a value, uh, so they, uh, there's really no limits to what you put inside uh, a behavior tree. Here, this, this example, you have it, the tutorial also in the GitHub repository. This example is uh, relevant because also we use a custom uh, type in the port. And when we use a custom type, we have to provide a way to basically parse uh, this uh, the, the string. So because from XML, we can only get a string, of course. So in this particular case, I said, OK, you will get three numbers uh, separated by uh, semicolon. And uh, yeah, he parse each of them as a double number. So I don't want to go too deep into this the syntax, but uh, you will see. Actually, if you have used the YAML, uh, C++, uh, it is similar to the way you, you implement uh, parsers there. Let's go to the most interesting part, that is uh, the move bay asynchronous action node. It is asynchronous because you can stop it. And, you, uh, and the way you stop it uh, is basically, I have a flag called aborted that is uh, set to true if this is called, who called this? Basically, is the behavior tree, according to a certain situation, may decide to kill an action. So this will be called for you. You just need to implement it. But that, that's the point. Whenever you want an asynchronous action, you have to provide a way to stop it. And what is really interesting in this particular case, uh, this is the ports, is the uh, tick, uh, once again, the tick function is really the interesting part. And if you take a look, it's very similar to the example uh, in ActionLib uh, that, that we have in ActionLib. So um, here we start looking if the server is connected and we wait up to two seconds. Uh, if it's not, if we can't connect to the server in two seconds, we return a failure. Then if the server is there, then we use get input to take this input. And actually this could return false because maybe you have done something wrong. There is no one providing this input uh, or there's uh, anything missing. So usually when you get, when this return false, means that you really messed up with the, with your BV tree. So probably you want to stop the application and say, hey, mm, look at your code because you have done something wrong. So I set uh, the flag aborted to false, and then following uh, the example, we have uh, move base call message. So this is, uh, if you ever used the, uh, you know, move base, you're already very familiar with it. I send the goal, and then instead of waiting a, a, a run, you know, until I get the, the answer, I need a loop in which I wait, uh, let's say only 20 milliseconds, because I want to be able to abort to abort this action. So that's the reason why I do a while loop that is interrupted either when I get when I get uh, you know the result or when uh, I get uh, the flag aborted to true. And uh, if aborted is true, then I ca I cancel all uh, goals and return failure. Otherwise, means that I got the result, but the result also could be a failure. So if, uh, or if everything was uh, was good, target reached. And when we look at the executor, we had to, of course, add ROS in it uh, at the beginning. Uh, we have uh, the private uh, node handle where we get uh, uh, the, the address uh, of the file, the, the path, sorry, of the file. And, and this is similar to all the other examples. I have a factory, I register my node, the move base. And usually you register a lot of nodes. In this case, it's only one. I create from file the, the tree. And then also I added here, one of the utility we have that is, uh, we have many methods to uh, create logs. Could be log on screen, could be log on file. 
could be publish it uh, so that you you can uh, uh, have a live streaming of what's going on with your sales machine. There are many of them. Uh, this is the simplest one, uh, standard uh, see uh, out. Uh, that basically you will see. Um, and instead of ticking only one, uh, the tree, we keep on ticking until uh, as long as uh, either Ross is okay and uh, um, we we get running from. So uh, if it's running, uh, keep on uh, ticking until you uh, up to 100 times per second uh, until you get either success or failure. Let's see if we can see this in action. So I'm going to start uh, uh, simulation. Where is it? Um, ASCII Gazebo. Yeah. So this will take a while. In the meantime, uh, let's uh, let's close this. Uh, uh, this is the almost there and we open a couple of uh, shells couple of terminals yeah one to run the amcl so move to of course needs that hello simulator okay Move to the cutting was space. Um, Rose Lounge uh, Husky. I think it was navigation and AMCL demo. Okay, we have AMCL running and uh, You will see I have a, this very, very simple uh, uh, state machine that is a sequence. Uh, it's a sequence of just two action. Go to position 110 in the map and then come back to 000 later. So it's just a sequence of a two move base. Let's see, the way we execute it is cross run. Uh, I call this project uh, BT. Uh, sample, uh, not particular, not very smart uh, name for the executable, and the argument is file, um, and it is et test dot xml. So hopefully it work. It works. Let's see. So when you look at the output here, so the, the all the state transition from idle to running, uh, running to success, that is the logger uh, we attached. So it is a ready to use mechanism that we can use, uh, you know, instead of uh, writing ourselves uh, raw scene for us and so on, uh, that is can, can be simply used. So what I can notice is that my state machine is working fine, but AMCL, isn't so actually that is interesting because okay success uh yeah so we've done uh we've done the so you have seen that uh, the library gives gives you a lot of uh, uh freedom about uh, what you put inside a uh, uh, a node and uh, stop sharing yes that's me again uh but it, yeah, but uh, you're not limited to use the action lib. Uh, uh, you can put any code in a, in a node that is related or not to ROS, the, and that is an advantage. But also, if you ask yourself, okay, how do I use this with ROS? Then the answer is uh, uh, action lib is probably the best way to do it. Uh, but you can you know, publish uh, something, uh, you can modify uh, dynamically reconfigure or you can do well, anything else. Uh, 
um, you just have to think if your node is a, should be synchronous, so uh, it's atomic, you cannot stop it, or you want to build it in a way like uh, we did uh, that allows you to stop uh, the execution of a long uh, process. And uh, we have, uh, actually, uh, um, uh, I want to point out uh, that uh, we have uh, a website. Uh, we, have, we have a website, uh, behaviortree.dev, uh, where you can find uh, all the tutorials. We have plenty of them. Uh, so whenever you have, uh, you will probably find an answer to all your questions in the, well, nine tutorials. Um, there is, there are, uh, that you can see here, then you have the GitHub repository um, on behavior tree. So you, you, you see that, it, okay, I mean, this name uh, is good for search engine optimization. <laughs> it's not a particular, it's smart, but so I think it's called behavior tree. Um, and something that uh, I didn't have the time uh, or I didn't want to explore today uh, because we have a little time. We also have a wonderful tool uh, that is called uh, Groot. It's a graphic user interface that you can use to create your tree, to edit your tree in a graphical way, and also to monitor them in real time. So you can, uh, using this uh, uh, application, you can connect uh, uh, to a tree that is being executed and see in uh, in practice uh, all the state transitions. Um, so you have here plenty of videos. Um, and if you need anything, let me know on GitHub, uh, report uh, bugs or ask questions. I'll try to, to answer them. So that's all from my side.